<laughs> Shall she, we call it to order? <laughs> Motion to call order. Okay, 701. So we have everyone. Everybody's here, yeah. 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 Welcome, Amy. Okay, so. She could be muted. Oh, she is muted. She's muted. She's a little red line there. All right, so first on the agenda is um, income stream legislative update. Right? Uh, no change really. Everything that was sent out is pretty self explanatory. I think no sense spending a whole lot of time on it unless anybody wanted to. Some of it was sent um, in response to questions that came up at the first meeting about you know, what streaming might provide. So I sent out Machino's fact sheet on that and he's back into some numbers. Um, the only thing I would say is that Mass Access has their annual meeting virtually tomorrow afternoon and Machino is the guest of honor at that meeting. So <clears throat> I'm sure she'll have something to say about the streaming bill. Um, you know, she's been the house sponsor for at least three sessions in a row now. She's on a committee that's looking at it. Um, so hopefully she'll have some updates again. February 7th is technically the drop dead date to have stuff come out of committees by. But um, Kayla Garabini came in to talk to Ian a couple of days ago now, right? And it seemed to me that her feeling, or it seemed to you that her feeling was maybe, but not likely. It's strange. So have to see. That's really all I would have to say about that. Answer any questions and stuff I sent out. Um, happy to do that. One thing that was in there was the letter from Moulton's office on a federal bill that would basically allow the cable companies to just negate contracts with 120 day notice at all levels. Uh, that would include the town. Obviously, you know, we'd be, we at WCAT would be out of luck. Um, that passed it's strictly a, a partisan bill. Um, it got passed on to the House, and the fear was they had no Senate corresponding bill, but the fear was that it could be attached to must-pass legislation. Um, haven't seen any indication of that yet, uh, so we'll have to see where that one stands to. So basically, no change from the last. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I thought that, thank you for giving all the information, Brian, because it was very interesting to read through, and I thought that... Um, it's Representative Turco from Winthrop. <clears throat> His comments were extremely uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. He's not a he's not a co-sponsor. Is he a co-sponsor? He was <clears throat> but at the hearing, he basically well, what he said was that. Um, I'm not in favor of a tax on consumers. The state should be responsible for funding local access stations. And then he says again, it should be direct state funding rather than the pass. But, but I think he's, he's looking at the pass through as, as a tax. So it'd be interesting to, <coughs> I, I think they've got personally, they've got a ton of, they got a whole new budget that came in. That's, I think, going to take a lot of time. I think it's very different than a lot of budgets they've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of local option stuff in it yep. that um, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to do, if, see if they even look at this at state right. Level right now. I agree. <clears throat> But at the same time, they're also saying that the state budget is going to be a little tight with some of the uh, uh, items that have come up over the last year. Correct. And um, funding's, right. funding's going to be not quite as um, generous as it was yeah, in the past uh, year. Um, I will hopefully have tomorrow the first cherry sheet. That, that takes a day or so for division of local services to kind of mm -hmm. run through everything. Mm -hmm. I know what the two main local aid areas are, but I don't know mm -hmm. that, so, mm -hmm. so, unless it's being properly done. Mm -hmm. It's still be interesting to see. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> okay. Is there anything else on the income stream legislation? Or is that it? I don't have anything else to say about it first. Okay. 
Have you had a chance to meet up with any of our state state reps or state senator? Well, again, included in the package was a letter that I sent out. I was hoping yeah. it would come from Mass Access, but he kind of was riding a little bit on it, so I just did it myself. But um, I sent a letter on behalf of CAT to all the co-sponsors on that committee. Of the 17 members of the committee, 10 mm -hmm. of them were co-sponsors. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know, you can talk about a tax on consumers all you want, but if you end up putting these things in such dire straits that a town's got to fund it, it's going to be a tax on somebody whether they have cable or not, right? Or whether they stream or not, it's, right? It's, they, they have, well, there goes my notes. Anyway, um, <laughs> I did not get any, um, I, and I really didn't expect to get any. I, the only person I got a response from was Rep. Chino, who just said, Thanks for sending that in, very helpful, yeah. Um, but that again, you know, they're they're coming up. With, the, the problem, among other problems, is that there are so many other things that they're dealing with. You know, they've had way outside the scope of these things. You know, they've had gun bills, migrant bills, you know, housing bills, all kinds of things going on, and it's just where priorities look. Right. And even people that sponsor or co-sponsor are going to have their own bills that are really important. There's some of the sponsors mm -hmm. that are important, but then they have the bills that are really important, mm -hmm. and they're going to fight for those. So. I think that's why we're three years in, four years in, we haven't seen any uh, any significant movement. But Ian makes a good point early on, just get off on a quick tangent here, about why they didn't just take the position rather than talk about cable, is talk about cable or internet. Just modify what's there now and say, if you have cable or you get these services through the internet, they're going to pay. And so maybe next go around. I mean, I'll you know I'll wait till the end to see if this thing goes anywhere or not. Um, even if it comes out of committee, it's still gonna pass, right? Obviously, but um, it seems like it got a little bit more convoluted perhaps than it had. Well, and and internet, you know, streaming is primarily an internet-based service, correct? Unlike cable. Mm -hmm. But they both go down the same cable. Same line. Well, yes, yes, but but from from the funding point of view that has been traditional, you kind of get separated, correct? Well, they're separated only by the fact that it benefits the cable providers, to, mm. or not the cable, it, the access providers, because not cable providers anymore. Right. Verizon provides cable; it also provides internet. Right. RCN provides cable and internet. Comcast mm. provides cable mm. and internet. And that was one of the points that Machino made early on in this process was people talk about cutting the cord. She said, they're not cutting the cord. They're cutting cable. They still have the cord. That's how they're getting these programs on right. their TV. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, it, you know. So it's just a different colored truck down the exact same highway. <laughs> yeah. But because it has a different color, they don't have to pull it off as a charge. Right. 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 Okay, anything else from anyone on this item? No? All right, let's move on to WCAT budget and reserves. Paul, thank you. Paul, thank you for sending that out. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so why don't we start with the, um, the uh, income statement and um, I'll... Uh, does everybody have that online or printed version or available? Uh, if not, we can probably put it on the screen, whatever works that for might anybody help, else. Because I'm still trying to figure out this Gravenda stuff. <laughs> okay. So let me, um, uh, let me find a Zoom link. No, this meeting. I'm not sure. um, so bear with me while I get the Zoom link for the meeting. I'm sharing. Emails. You got it? Oh, yeah. they really don't give oh you so that would be helpful. Yeah. No. I see it out there. I, I just get so many. It must be in the room. Yeah, you can do that. You need to copy. Take care of a copy. I'll do that. Sure. Yeah, sure. Please. Copy's all around. All right. from the <laughs> you're so yeah, yeah. No hip. You, you use this system every single day no I you're just an expert at it you know i had trouble getting on actually that's why i come early <laughs> oh there's a download pdf 
Oh, yeah, man. it's well, it. There we go. And then I went to print it and went, nope, sorry, oh, yeah, does cannot not, do not that. Print to print. Yeah, that is true. No, wrong. That program is not meant to print. It should. Yeah. Oh, board books. Did I say I wasn't a fan? Huh? Did I say I wasn't a fan of going <laughs> Neither am I. I. I find it very hard to write on the screen and have it stick, you know? <laughs> you have to get a tablet. Oh, oh, I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a I'm Googling. Is your volume on the I'm not on the I'm not on So it's coming from this. All right, right. Yeah. shut that right off. Right? That takes care. Of okay, cool. Thank you. All, All right. right. Now. Okay, uh, Brian's just out so making some screen, copies. Um, yeah, work on that. Okay, cool. <coughs> yeah, that's what you want to do. Yeah. Now we can share. So that's cool. Can you, it didn't call me. You just passed me. Sure. Okay. Exacting task well suited to my abilities. <laughs> Check the IRS ability here, right? <laughs> How many federal workers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So page one, page two. I'm going to pass them around one, two. Okay, so we have it on the screen. Uh, we'll wait for Brian to come back and we'll go to it. No, we're all set on this one. Okay, so the request of last meeting was to uh, provide uh, some more detail on the expense elements of the budget, the income elements uh, that we have here are the same ones that we had last time. So this level of detail was provided, our major revenue stream, franchise oh, fees, of course, forecast to go down by 2%, sponsorship and membership stay about the same, uh, interest and investment income, which is, is, uh, is really just our interest and dividends on our investments. Uh, video production income is going down. Actually, I just want to mention that I provided the 2023 actual as a point of reference. Uh, we had talked about you know giving information for the budget, but I wanted you guys to see kind of uh, how things are going from year to year. It's more educational. So we had a great year with. Uh, we talked about the um, the group mass partnership for youth that uh, retained us to do a lot of work for them. And um, we uh, gained 60,000 from them and we didn't feel like we could continue. We couldn't count on that level of volume. So, um, and of course the ARPA contribution uh, was there last year, but not there this year. Is it not there this year because it's elsewhere or because we, we, we weren't funding it for this year? We the funding that we received was $132,000 right. last year. There were two pieces to it. We're seeing here is the cap operating piece. In the other piece, the, you put the other in piece cap. was capital, but okay. uh, the town has not, the town council has not approved <clears throat> any ARPA money for us for this year. Right. And is the video production reduction more because we have less personnel or we just don't think that they're going to want to contract mm. with, with as much? Or um, It's not a personnel issue. We have the capacity. So, um, you know, last year, I think was our best year ever for outside video production income. You know, this mass partnership for youth, we get a real home run with. And um, so it was our first year with them and they were doing lots of things. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we, um, I think uh, we can say that they have continued on this year. Uh, and, um, but we didn't think when we put together, together the budget at the beginning of July, uh, 2023 for our fiscal year, that we could expect to do as well. How, we, how did we do six months a year to 
you know, to, towards for six uh, that's months. That's a great question. Actually. I'll come back to that in the oh, context okay. of uh, okay. this whole picture for six months because I just like to ask as we go because otherwise. All right. Well, then I'm I'm gonna I, I, I lose go. track. <laughs> I lose track. All right. I will <clears throat> help make sure you don't lose track. Uh, I'll answer the question right now. That's okay. We, we can do it later. <sighs> no, I got Whatever it. works for you. Um, so our video production <laughs> income um, for the. Um, <clears throat> six months, July through December, has been 17,000. Uh, we had budgeted about 12,500. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's a little bit of variability about the timing during the year, but uh, we're a little ahead of where we expected, but clearly nowhere near last year. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions on the revenue information before we take a look at expenses? Um, we'll... Ian, yes. when the high school starts building, what sort of effect is that going to cause here for any outside production? Uh, it is, again, it depends on what actually happens and what the actual schedule is for the build. Mm -hmm. um, if without knowing the noise level, the assumption is, is that from working hours in the morning to when the workers knock off in the afternoon, it will be too noisy here to do anything with sound recording. So that means that rental of the studio to any corporation or group will likely go down to zero because most people are not gonna do it at night. And at night is our most busy time for town events as it is. We have both the school committee and the town council and a bunch of other town groups that use this facility in the evening. Right. Um, so we're expecting that for the length of that time frame, we're going to have little to no ability to rent this space out to be able to record or do things. And that editing means, would be a different story. The yeah. podcast room we're hoping is far enough away that it'll be insulated enough to still function. Um, or we just try to have to do everything between three and five. But that's kind of the, even the podcast room is kind of an open question at this time. At this time, until I know what the actual noise level is going to be. We don't generate any income from outsiders for the use of the podcast in, uh, room, do we? Oh, we do have some, yes. Okay. Um, we have several uh, healthcare mm -hmm. organizations that are now interested. Oh, cool. And okay. that have been interested in the past. No, it was Wakefield being one of them. Um, who do a podcast with their doctors. Okay, great. Um, the, the video production and other income, um, and you mentioned the mass partnership for you, is most of that done offsite? Uh, no, so half of that was done that offsite. Was offsite. Um, a lot of that was actually done here in the student. Just to jump off that on that a bit, um, you know, I talked about, I don't know if everybody knows or not, but in the budget that was originally approved, um, Kate with the Garabiti put in uh, an earmark of $25,000 for WCAT. That got cut when Governor Healy made the nine C cuts, got cut in half. Right. So she was she was disappointed. And, and Ian and I individually reached out to her and said, you know, we're gonna get we're gonna get twelve thousand five hundred dollars that we wouldn't have had either way. So you know, you thought of us, we appreciate it, it'll be good to have. But along those lines, MPY also got a nine C cut. Oh really? So um, <clears throat> how significant do we know how significant the that was? It's fifty percent. Um Don Meg, do we don't know though. What was there they have a twenty five thousand dollar grant as well? I don't I don't know what okay, their earmark right, so, was. So it's 50, uh, their earmark was larger than ours. I don't know the exact right. okay, number. Thank you. And um, so I think the position that we're taking is that um, you know, she's like, What are we gonna do? And I think your position was we wanna help you up, you know. So if that's what you have, we'll try to make that work. But again, you know, I don't know who else we have for client. I mean, she's the biggest by far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the nine C cuts tentatively right now are going to cost us twenty one thousand dollars, including including kids, including kids. So this is twelve five plus the impact of the mass partnership, which we're that. estimating at about eight thousand dollars. Okay, so we were ahead of the budget for video and production income for the first. Uh, six months because we we cut it back. Um, so I would say that uh, the fact that we were ahead for the first six months, if we've got a cut coming away, um, then you know we're probably okay on that line. Uh, we do not have included in our budget 
to 12,500 right. direct payment to WCAT. We weren't really sure when that was going to happen, yes. how it was going to work out. And I would have put in 25,000. So I'm glad we didn't put anything in. So we can keep it, we can put sort of 12,500 as a um, likely uh, variance there because the franchise fee income isn't going to, it's, it's set. Uh, we know it's been appropriated. Uh, so whether the number is a little higher or not, that number is a number. Um, right. And um, so the other thing I just to follow up on the high school thing. On that yet, by the way. So the 12, <clears throat> Okay. I actually, I just sent her an email okay. asking what the process and timeline of us getting it is, and I have not heard back. Uh, Ian, on the timing, the high school uh, construction potential disruption, the impact on these uh, the production. What what fiscal year of ours will that be? What what count, What time frame are we looking at? Just uh, that starts in April of this year. The actual construction does and goes until twenty twenty seven. Again, as soon as April. Okay, I didn't know this was that soon. Okay, thank you. Now, again, I, after talking with Tim last night on another matter of parking, he seems to think that the first six to eight months will not be nearly as yeah. large and grand uh, as the last three years um, because it's just them prepping the parking lot, taking up the field, and things like that. There will still be noise, though. So, so the fiscal year twenty shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the uh, income section? <clears throat> okay. Um, so I took the same categories that I presented last time. The major that what you see in uh, in the box is the categories that we uh, saw last time, and now you're seeing the elements of those categories broken down. Um, one of the important things to note is that this is our budget. And in our budget, we did not anticipate that Ryan um, would leave and that Ian would take his place. So we had a budget for an executive director, uh, chief engineer, Ian's old role, <coughs> studio administrator. Um, and we replaced uh, our video, our senior editor, and our two part timers with to full-time positions. So it's about a swap in terms of the dollars, 87,000 to 82,000. Um, <clears> we are going to reforecast the remaining six months of our fiscal year based upon our current, what we know. Mm -hmm. um, and I can kind of give you sort of a, what that's gonna look like in general. Basically, um, we decided that uh, we would have Ian, when he was promoted to executive director, the, he has a the salary that was in the budget, the 84,000 or 85,000. Uh, he made the decision not to replace his senior chief engineer role with a chief engineer because he has the technical skill set that is critical for us to be successful. But um, instead, we added a third uh, part video specialist at $40,000. So we took the 74 that we had in the budget and we have saved 35,000 annually because we've replaced that with a 40,000. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Ian? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's important for, um, and, and I can, as we get through the end of this, you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our budget versus actuals for the first six months um, and the potential implications of that going forward. So that we have a, so as I said, as a, as a board, we're going to be doing a formal forecast for January through July, uh, June uh, and reset our budget to uh, a more one point forecast. <clears throat> OK, um, so those are the um, those are the, um, with, uh, the, the team that we have in place. We pay a holiday bonus, which is one week of pay. I have payroll taxes, um, health insurance. We talked about this last time. So we put in a twenty-five thousand uh, dollar health uh, bogey for health insurance, and we were in the process of analyzing, getting quotes. Uh, we also talked about the fact that we wanted to make people el eligible for the four hundred one k plan after ninety days of employment, as compared to two years. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the fact that we wanted to provide a, um, a life insurance benefit to our employees. So. Uh, where we stand on that is that the um, we did finally get some quotes for the health insurance. We had budgeted this to begin in October, if you remember, 
uh, around the end of the year, we finally got some quotes. Mm -hmm. And um, it turns out that our current staff has opted not to um, use our benefit that we can provide based on what was quoted by the healthcare provider. Um, but as an organization, we're still going to put in place this benefit program because we may lose someone you know, tomorrow. And when we complete in the market, yeah, we have a salary, but you don't have any benefits. It just is not where you want to be. So we're going to be talking about the fact this 25000 was in here, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be a real expense uh, that I can see uh, for the next six months, assuming our current uh, staffing is our staffing at the end of six months. Okay. Uh, we should see an increase in the 401k plan because we decided that, um, that we were going to make everyone eligible for the 401k uh, plan, uh, as I mentioned, uh, changing the uh, length of service required. <clears throat> so uh, before we move on from wages and benefits, um, you, know, you can see really the 17% increase in the major category is due completely to those health insurance costs that we need to add. That's about a $39,000 increase mm -hmm. uh, in our, our total uh, cost uh, to run the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we keep that in mind in terms of um, you know, the, the variances and the, uh, you know, why, why it's up as much as it is here. Okay. Uh, any questions on this category? So maybe it was a dumb question about the health insurance. So, so it's going to cost like twenty five thousand dollars just to have the administrator, the benefit administrator. No, we we put twenty five thousand dollars in the budget in uh, the time we created the budget yeah. as an estimated cost of what it would cost us, the company, to pay seventy percent, seventy five percent, and the employees to pay twenty five percent. Okay. So uh, then we went out and tried to find a, a, a benefits consulting firm. We looked into all that, and we ended up with a, a provider. That is um, that allows us to when we sign up for them to be able to offer the program. Okay. Our cost is going to be zero because no one has accepted. You know, none of our employees want the program. Okay. Um, and I can't tell you right now. <clears throat> you know, is uh, you know, we made some <clears throat> excuse me, we made some assumptions about who might take it, who might not. Uh, assumptions on premiums based upon some of the premiums that the town's paying, and what we got information from other providers. So. Uh, so we can't use that twenty-five thousand as a proxy for a future nine-month cost. But you know we'll have better information. Bottom line, it's going to be zero. Were, were the costs prohibitive, even with the employees having twenty-five percent? The employees just got to look at it and said it's it's too much. No, no so so. our staff is young and they're all still in the parents. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you got the, you got the young Affordable people care and the older you know, people. But you're, I know that, but yeah. you're an employee. Yes, but my wife is a GIC. Okay. So, so yes, I'm taking the GFC. <laughs> yeah, which is going up. Which is going up. <laughs> so that's really the yeah. issue. Um, I think we'll probably find that our profile, employee profile, does skew towards um, you know the two ends. We have some more senior people yeah. uh, on, that we'll have on a going basis, basis, and we'll have you know our younger team mm -hmm. that, um, as long as they're able to be covered by their parents' plan on the age of 26, will be good. But yeah. and we. Barbara is on her husband's plan. But the life insurance and 401k match are still in play. You, you expect those to be similar to the numbers. We're, we're going to need to reforecast that. Okay. Yeah, now that we have all of our people in place and with their ages, a lot of this will probably change. In change in this. Younger usually gets better. Yeah. Uh, any other wage and benefit questions? If not, we're going to move into the next none. category. Amy, you're all set, right? Okay. I think we lost her. I'm not no, sure. Amy's here. No, she's, no, she's hiding behind the. Yeah. Oh, just, I'm yeah. Still <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, I see, she's on my screen right oh, here. Yeah. You can see her here. Um, okay. Uh, next category is the uh, facilities, insurance, equipment, and supplies. 2% increase from last year to this year, basically flat, $53,000. And um, you know, there is um, there's some pluses and minuses, no big deal here. Uh, you got your insurance coverages, your utilities, uh, office supplies, payroll services, uh, studio equipment, software repairs, and facility repairs and cleaning are directly related to what happens during the year that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we base it on uh, sort of some history, but there are some pluses and minuses. So 
Again, that category, that's what that category is uh, and uh, really no change from last year. Whereas when we get to the next category about IT support and professional fees, uh, this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, we include um, the category of staff augmentation consultants. Um, we didn't spend anything on that last year, although we did have it in our revised budget for the second half of the year. And we have 8,000 forecasted for this year. Um, essentially, we um, run into situations where the timing of different events that are being, um, that will be against the cover, whether they're uh, town um, related or uh, groups in the town, unfortunately, some of these all aggregate on, you know, around the same time period, sometimes on weekends. So you yeah. end up in a situation. November town meeting. Yeah. You end up in situations where there's too many things to do at a specific point in time. And the choices are to ask our employees to do too much, work too hard, uh, burn out, or say no. And we've done it to some of the groups that, you know, I'm sorry, we're fully booked. And we've done a combination of both of those things. And as we got into the fall of last year, um, we were um, concerned as a management team and a board that we were at risk of losing some key employees due to burnout. And what we really need to do is have a group of um, consultants that can come in for specific projects that have the technical skill set. And Ian has a good um, network and knows uh, people that can come in to supplement our team during those periods of time. Um, I think the number that we have in here is that we're, uh, is our budget, um, I forget what our budget per hour is for these guys that uh, maybe, maybe I'll look that up. But uh, what, what, it depends what's it? on what is needed. It's anywhere from uh, 200 for the night to $75 an hour. Okay, so, so it's ra it ranges. Yeah, it so, ranges depending on what the need is. <clears throat> so this is really a safety valve, which is important. We only spend it if we have to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've spent very little of that this year. Um, accounting tax and audit, you know, we do have uh, audit and financial statements, as you know. Uh, and we um, have uh, one of the uh, bookkeep, one of the uh, staff accounts from the accounting firm come in each month and help uh, us sort of close out the financial statements and QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we don't pay Ian to be an accountant, but he does end up doing a certain amount of accounting work. Um, and uh, so uh, the fact that we can prevent, provide detailed budget versus actual statements each month, um, and uh, it's this. This is a well, uh, well uh, invested money there. IT technical services. <clears throat> this is a pretty big number, but you know we have found that our you know as you know the, the technology that we have, uh, that all of us have, is changing all the time. And in our business, it is changing all the time, and it's much more complicated than what we have at home. So um, we have. Um, retained a firm on a, uh, a monthly basis to be there for um, technical support. So it's, you know, if you have an outage of some kind, they're able to be here right away. We don't want to have any downtime. Uh, they also um, provide a, um, a level of technical expertise, which they're keeping up with the trends and Ian certainly is as well but there are certain times where we just need someone who is an expert. And so we have um, retained them. Uh, we budgeted an increase here because we believe that they would be very helpful for us as we were working with the committees that were dealing with the new high school and the technology for the new high school and you know, making sure that we were able to provide the services that the town would expect from the new building mm -hmm. and, um, and wanted to be sure that we had the uh, availability of this um, expert, technology expert to help us on certain aspects. Well, you indicated that these consultants weren't really used that much so far this year. Do you have numbers on the six months for the IT and for the consultants? I sure do. <laughs> so the six months for the IT uh, consultants is, um, let's see. Okay, 
Um, 11,000 actual budget 17.7 for the six months on the IT consultants. The, um, and the, uh, the weird number in here uh, for um, month of December, I've got to follow up on, but the outside services, uh, we have, um, we put 3,200 of the 8,000 in the first six months of the year. And um, we have used um, I actually want to get back to you on that because the, the short story is we haven't used very much of the of that amount. Okay. So, so, so these are not retainer amounts, these are use based. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ian, you know, we don't really know when we're going to run into the issue, but when we do run into the issue, he has um, the right part people in his network who would say we need a, someone who's got a strong video or audio or whatever the case may be. He can get the right person in there. So, so for an IT technical service, like what's an example of an IT technical service that you get? So the gentleman that we contract out by um he is responsible for our network. He is responsible for our firewall. He is responsible for all the connectivity between any machine in here, as well as interfacing with any customer support for those machines with the manufacturers. Okay. And he's also on speed dial when something is not working right and I call him in a panic. Okay. <laughs> Because um, I will say for myself, I try to maintain as much technical knowledge as I can because that is what I love to do. Um, but I only have so many hours in the day, and it is very quickly getting bored for me. And we knew right away that the challenge with Ian being promoted to executive director mm -hmm. meant that he had to, he had to find a technical replacement, technology replacement, because mm -hmm. he can't be chief engineer and uh, executive director. And while we originally went out and had a job description that was a more senior level than what mm -hmm. we ended up replacing him with, um, you know, that uh, we weren't really able to find the right person. And we decided that uh, if we have um, this gentleman here that um, uh, we have for the technical services, if he ha we had him available, he would sort of plug the gap mm -hmm. as well so that Ian can be less involved with that. Uh, because he's got a new full time job. And he does a wonderful too. job at it. And it's, it has allowed us to maintain the level of technology that we have without having to have that increase in personnel. So, okay. just a quick example of that I'm the least technical person here. I just learned how to use the pencil sharpener recently. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of meetings ago, we had a government meeting come up, and 20 minutes before the meeting, we couldn't get the control room to work. So Ian's all over, he, he's the best. He really is a great technician. We called the gentleman we're talking about here. He walks you through it on the phone and it turns out Ian never would have known because it's an upgrade to Apple that shuts down things unless you tell it to activate it. Oh, the default is it shuts it down. So we're in a position where we couldn't, we were gonna be in a position not to be able to kick, I think it was Tom Council. I guess Tom Council. Um, just on the update, and we're, you know, less than 15 minutes, Ian calls him up, he's on speed dial, he's, he's unbelievable, this guy. Um, just through his, over, over the phone, basically telling him, you got to do this, you got to do this, and that's how you, you save those things. So definitely, definitely worth the money. For this okay. All right. Any All other questions on that? Uh, we need to move on to... Um, the next category, uh, actually, these other categories are pretty small. Uh, you know, movies by the lake, so advertising really quick, promotion. Uh, yes, we didn't talk about investment management fees. So we have, we have, um, um, if I brought that up, we utilize Ameriprise to, uh, and this is the, uh, it's either 0.75 or one percent of the portfolio value that is the investment fee. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, when we do our budget, we do not budget any. Uh, gain or loss on the market value of the investments. We don't sell them. I mean, we, we don't, we're not in the buying selling mode. So, uh, but we do budget for dividend income and interest income. So, um, 
So that's our, uh, that's the investment management fees. That, uh, that's why that's there. Okay. Is 1% a reasonable number for that or is it? And I think it's pretty much consistent with the market. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay. It, it is consistent. The account goes down, the fee goes down. The value of the account goes up. Okay. Amy, do you have a comment Amy? on that? I, I'm just going to say 1% is pretty consistent with the market. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, any other questions about uh, this um, before I talk about what our what our results have been for the six months to date and what that tells me about uh, our budgeted $86,000 loss? I have the great news because I don't think we're going to have a budgeted $86,000 loss. Um, I think we're going to come in close to break even. I'm going to tell you why. And that's why, you know, as they said, we're going to reforecast the budget. We just got our December financial statements in. Before you go on to that, um, you had other expenses. And uh, one that caught my eye was uh, mobile studio expense. That's the truck that's sitting out here, correct? Right. You have insurance. You have um, gas and oil. Mm -hmm. You have um, uh, maintenance. So, uh, so yes, that's... Um, and the truck is how old is the truck even? Uh, is it 20, is that an L? It's got to be 20, no, 20, 20, 2012, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's getting on to being close yeah. to 13, 14 years old. And if we had to replace it, any idea of uh, sort of what the replacement cost is? Uh, yeah, that's I'm not exactly sure because we would have to look at it. You really, I don't think we would buy that same thing. Um, because the way we do a lot of stuff, we probably end up with a sprinter. They're probably 48000 Maybe we could buy a used one at thirty. All right, so the bottom line is we're 12 years into this, this truck. Uh, and um, so we are going to have increasing maintenance. Mm -hmm. And our capital fund does not, um, have, does not have anywhere near enough money to mm -hmm. be spending money on a truck. So mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure that Committee understood those those issues. Well, one of the reasons the truck is, has, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ian, but one of the reasons the truck has lasted as long as it has was mm -hmm. for two thirds of its life, it was garage. Yes. And it's not anymore. It is not anymore. It was becoming too, it was becoming prohibitively expensive to maintain the garage. Plus, the garage is 15 miles away where we had it. <laughs> <laughs> so anytime we wanted to use it, we were coming in two hours early, driving down there, picking it. Somebody would have to drive somebody down there, pick it up, drive back, and then we'd use it. And then we'd have to drive back down there, and then you pick the person back up and drive back home. Okay. Um, so it's just it, it was impacting to the point where people didn't want to use it. So it says the book value of your truck's seventy grand on here. Is that? Is that the right number? If it's like, um, is that the is that you're looking at the income, the balance sheet, the, balance the historical sheet. cost? Yeah. Well, it says fixed assets. Okay, so that's the historical cost, and the mm -hmm. depreciation would be on a separate line. Okay, yeah, that's so, what we're you know, uh, Yes, that was what it would cost us twelve years ago for that truck. Right. Okay. Plus, that was a custom job. Yes. With mm -hmm. and that at that time was outfitted as a rolling control room. Yes. Yeah. Which it can still be, but we segmented that so that the equipment just doesn't sit in the truck and not do anything. We right. can take that equipment <clears throat> completely out and use it elsewhere while the truck just remains. So it would be like 35 grand for a truck and then you have to do more stuff for the truck? Okay. And you think that would be about 70 grand or would that be more? Uh, nowadays it would be probably more like 90. Okay. There, there are companies in the area that specialize in in uh, production unit customization. Both, you know, at, at the professional level, at the local level and whatever. Okay, um, any other thoughts or questions that you had, David, on the other expense question, other expenses or any questions anyone else has on that section? I don't see any more, anyone <clears throat> else? Amy, any questions? I'm good. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about our actual results for the first six months of the year. Our our income 
uh, has been $14,000 greater. We talked a little bit about the uh, video production being greater than we had planned. But of that 14,000, 7,000 is gain or unrealized gain or loss on uh, the asset values at Ameriprise. So you have to take that out of the equation. Uh, we're not gonna get that cash in. It's just a, it's a fluctuating number. So uh, about $7,000 of real um, variance there. And as I said, we don't budget for um, the unrealized gain or loss. So that was half of the value. Mm -hmm. Um, the expenses, uh, because of some of the changes that we made with the health insurance we talked about, primarily the change in the staffing, um, have resulted in a $36,000 uh, favorable variance. Of the $36,000, about twenty dollars is related to um, personnel, salaries, wages, uh, and um, payroll taxes. So we talked about the change in our staffing there that caused that to be the case. Um, and... Um, the outside services, um, we have about a, a ten thousand dollar change on outside services. Um, so again, using a uh, sort of favorable variance there, using um, fewer uh, technical services and fewer of the um, uh, the consultants for um, uh, the um, work that we talked about with uh, sort of the relief staff. I'll call it. Mm -hmm. And then the last category is we had about eight, $8,200 savings in health insurance costs. So again, health insurance, we talked about the 25 is not going to be spent. Mm -hmm. So you have eight there. Uh, so those are the ma major items that are contributing to a $36,000 reduction in expenses. So let's say that we can hold that 36,000 and the um, 7,000 on the income that we have as a, uh, so let's, let's technically put that in the bank for a moment. That's $43,000 that is uh, a budget favorable item through December. Mm -hmm. um, now, what else can we look at? Well, when I look at the um, budgeted wages versus the staffing that we have now for January through June, and we're gonna, as I said, we're gonna reforecast this, but we're gonna, I'm estimating that we're gonna save $18,000 for the next six months of the fiscal year um, because of the staffing change. Um, I am um, also going to estimate that um, the 25,000 that we have in the budget that we talked about, that was an October through June budget period. So the second six months are gonna be more savings than what we had in the first six months. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's about 17,000. So if you take the 17,000 and the 18,000, you got about 35,000 of pretty reasonably certain expense savings mm -hmm. uh, just because of the, the staffing issues we talked about. So uh, if you take another 35,000 onto the 43,000 we have in the bank, we come up with a number of um, 78,000. And um, we had a forecasted loss here of 86,000. So uh, I'm not suggesting we need to dismiss the committee and move, move uh, you know, because we don't have any problems anymore, but I am happy. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're glad to go back. Good. <laughs> yeah, we're having a good time. So far, this is going good. You also have the 12.5 from the state. Um, haven't considered yet. That's right. You're exactly right. So, um, so we, could be, uh, we could have lucked out here and come in with a break-even operation, even though um, uh, the uh, you're seeing the revenue trends going down. Um, and um, but I think you can appreciate it from you know looking at our uh, our budget, our expenses from last year. One of the things I didn't talk about is the expense increase. You know, it's showing uh, a 16% increase on our expenses. But if you take out the the health benefit cost, which really is a part of the operation. It's, mm -hmm. it's masking things. That's, that brings you down to a 7% increase. And then if you take the staff augmentation dollars, zero last year, 8,000, that takes you down to about a 5% increase in expenses. So we, we pretty much uh, manage our expenses tightly, live within our means, control what we can control, mm -hmm. and um, you know, pray that the uh, screening bill passes. <laughs> we come up with great ideas here. <laughs> Um, uh, so any um, any questions on that before we move on to the reserve analysis? And the federal bill doesn't pass. 
Oh, that'd be horrible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. Thank you. So anything else, Paul? Not on that sheet, but the next category is the reserve discussion, which is, it's, there's an attachment. Okay. You, you can't but see but before we go to that, let yeah. me just go around the table and make sure no one else has any questions, comments. No, Amy? Nope, I'm good. Okay. All right. Let's, yeah. yeah. The one comment that I do want to make is while we were able to make this year meet, um, as I'm sure everybody knows, but I just feel it's worth mentioning, that this is a temporary reprieve, and now we basically reset the payment cycle for employees, and it's just going to start going up again until either this crop of people goes for a new job and we're bringing in new people again. Um, the concern I have with that is it takes anywhere from eight to 12 months for somebody to become fully confident in the work that's done here on a day-to-day -day basis. So constantly changing over the staff right. and prohibits us from having the expertise necessary for this place to run effectively. Well, fully confident and fully integrated. Yeah. So I really want to try to maintain a certain number of them over time so that that institutional knowledge is not immediately lost. Your um, part-timers had some experience when you converted them to full. I would think that, you know, as long as they're happier being full, that you may have some positive effect there, retention. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, but that at some good. point, though, the numbers for anybody sure. have to match what their living expenses are. Um, I don't know that we can keep up with the way the world goes. Yep. Um, so I expect that we will have a turnover of some measure. That's just the way business is. I just don't want to foresee that we have all three of them being the exact same time. Do you know how many of them, when, when is the first one going to turn 26 years old and need health insurance coverage? I believe that is in uh, two years. Okay. So um, that's uh, not that we have two years to solve the problem because, you know, someone could leave tomorrow and we can't be going out in the market with a uh, non-competitive benefit package yet. Okay. So I brought up on the screen the, balance, the reserve uh, analysis that... Uh, was uh, also another request. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I had provided at the last meeting the audit of June information. So, so I wanted to show the committee where that stands as of the um, end of December. Mm -hmm. And um, so the first major subtotal is operating fund cash and investments. And the Ameriprise uh, value that went up by $11,000 in, from that time period is really a uh, unreal, uh, it's a unrealized gain uh, value there. There's a portion of it's unrealized. Um, so, but you can see that the cash balances and the operating fund balances in cash are about the same as they were before. And you can also see that the capital fund balances are about the same as they were before. This, when we talk about reserves and fund balances, uh, the thing that we really want to focus on in these two categories, well, how much of that is in cash? Because when you say, well, you know, the capital fund has uh, assets, uh, non-depreciated assets of $86,000. So you have to add that in. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, technically you do, but does it do anything for you in terms of the issues that we're addressing of how do we fund the operation uh, mm -hmm. for capital needs or operating needs? So, as the owner of one of the painting companies I worked for in college, said, "I can't eat a truck." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's why I highlighted those two uh, values. So um, you know, we, we we were talking about sort of the breakdown uh, of what's cash and what wasn't in our last meeting, based on the audited financial statement. So it wasn't quite as easy to see mm -hmm. as this analysis shows you. So. Um, uh, that is really um, the, and again, you look at our cash, um, our non-cash assets are, um, you know, 100,000 of the 960, of, yeah, 100,000 of the 960. So it's really uh, all cash. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then on the liability side, you know, you have the new um, 
uh, note payable for the truck. So that's a that's a negative asset in the capital account. You got some operating expenses, accrued expenses, and that kind of thing. So basically, you come down with forty thousand dollars worth of liabilities. So most of those are really the capital fund, and um, so um, that's really the breakdown of the reserves that um, I wanted the committee to uh, understand and appreciate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the CDs will have um, interest booked at a later time. Uh, yes, we. Uh, we ba we booked the CD interest uh, at uh, when the CD term is up, and you know um, it used to be 0.25 percent. So uh, the time it took to book the journal entry was you know um, more time than the, the money to earn. Uh, you earned. Fortunately, we're up to five percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's better than 0.25. Yeah, I have a question on the note, which which is on the truck, I guess. Yes. Um, no. No. No, no, the no, note is on, on not on the truck. On the transistor system. Okay. Yeah, it's new. Um, um, so the note is thirty grand, twenty nine grand. Um, what's the what's the rate? I mean, you don't have to answer this today. Is it worth paying off the note if the interest on the note is greater than what? If you can make more in the bank than what the note is, is is it worth you know clearing clearing off that liability? And you know your income may be higher. I'm just saying, do the exercise. Yeah, I can know. tell you. I can give you some information on that. But here's yeah. here's the real challenge. We have um, only three hundred fifteen thousand dollars in our capital fund. That would be a, a coming out of our capital right. fund. And and going forward, our capital fund increase based on the contracts that are in place is going to be about right. forty thousand dollars a year. So if we run into issues, so that's one of the things that we're considering. And the main reason why we didn't. Norm, do what, what we normally do, which was pay for this seventy thousand dollar piece of equipment in cash out of the capital fund. We we were we concerned about that, um, so that's kind of the business issue, operations issue. But I can answer the question in a moment on the interest rate. Uh, we got we went to the savings bank and went to the co op and we got proposals from both of them. Um, and from the bank. So oh yeah. Finance companies have buy in quote. Yeah, and um, so so we did do our homework in terms of getting a couple of different quotes, and the savings bank had the best uh, deal for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, in terms of cash flow, it, it it looks like about a half million dollar a year operating budget, more or less, right? Yeah. So I mean, we're talking about forty five grand a month on average. Are the amounts in you know the savings bank operating of one hundred ninety thousand is is seems to be more than might be needed for the monthly funding for the funding that is and then we've got another 128 in cash cap checking capital yes um, are we are we i think it, i think over, you're raising a good question that we may be able to um to shift some of that uh you know we oh, some of these five percenters are six six months cds they're pretty right. liquid Exactly. Yeah. So we were in a position now where we can get 5% versus 0.25. Right. And so that certainly changes that equation. On the Ameriprise side, we only introduced the Ameriprise fund uh, in probably uh, two, been two years or so. We went from you know having everything in CDs to right. uh, Ameriprise. And you know, quite honestly, at the board level, there was some anxiety about going, you know, putting our uh, nest egg into these um, but it's been clearly the right move. Yeah. So uh, I think you're raising a good point, though, as I said, with the uh, spread of point marks. And I think, Mike, part of that also was this great amorphous of the happening of this building. Understood. So there was a concern of if we put this stuff in there, and then all of a sudden, oh, we need it. You don't want things tied up when you need them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, because unfortunately for us, Several of the key components of the operation of this place are not small numbers to replace. Mm -hmm. So the main switching system, the main transmission system, things like these are five digits easy. Right. Um, if not 50,000 a lot. Right. I mean, you know, we'll get to that in the second half of the page because we've got we've got assets. Of course, we've got depreciation and paper expense, but a lot of money went into these. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, right. More more than the depreciation. What's the fair value of that, and how much are we at risk of losing in the process? And I don't remember. And what's the replacement cost if we have to pay elsewhere? Is it true to say that some of that operating account is used? The peg fees get paid quarterly. Yes. So in no, some it's kind cases, of funding the non-cash. Right. So not it's getting. funding your expenses until the peg fees come in, and then that account gets replenished. That, yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah. yeah. So that it should be higher. 
might not have to be that high, but it's it right. A, it's a it's, it's a factor, factor for sure. Yep. Well, we've also put ourselves on a very strict diet over the past since Ryan took over uh, three years ago. We kept everything under close leash, and we did not overspend on anything, and we were able to maintain a reasonable closeness of budget for mm -hmm. as long as possible but mm -hmm. you know the number just keeps dropping uh, right so that's why we are now at this point but we have done everything that we yeah. did to minimize that amount and a lot of that was keeping this to be able to even everything yeah and, and including right. this fiscal i give you credit for restructuring the help the way you did because it seems to have been proven mm -hmm. it's interesting you bring that up because when ryan took over from Tom Stapleton as executive director. Mm -hmm. He made the decision at that time that he was not going to replace himself. So we went yeah. down a person at a time, which was critically important because our revenues were going down. <clears throat> and so, um, so we did that. We held that position for as long as we could uh, mm -hmm. until we had to, um, you know, couldn't do it anymore. And that's where we brought in the the, the junior level of 40,000. So there were a couple of very important decisions that were made for, in terms of staffing mm -hmm. that have helped us uh, tremendously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any other questions on the reserve um, document before I take this off the screen? No, no. Okay, great. Also, awesome. thank you. Thank you. I guess I just have one, one quick question. Um, so, it looks like there's like a bunch of um, assets and like furniture and fixtures and leasehold improvements. How much of that do we lose when, when we relocate to the high school? It's a great question because we've been talking about what can we move from here and not have to, and you know, including things like you know the mirrors on the makeup mirrors in the restrooms. Rip them off you know, we, we we're getting into that level of detail. Okay. So we're thinking about everything we can Get possibly that chandelier move. down. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's oh, actually, those two giant mirrors right there yeah. are something that we've got to figure out how to get off the wall without cracking. So, well, and, and that brings up a question while you're bringing that up on the screen. This space here was all designed by a local firm. Yes. And they out also district. oversaw and managed the build out. Yes. Out of district. <laughs> We all know that. <laughs> what it, what similar are you doing or planning to do for the new high school location? As far as interior design? Mm -hmm. um, so that is partially related to what is finally decided as far as what we get. It looks like furniture will be included based on the conversations I've had with the architects because the amount that we would quote require is pretty small compared to the amount <coughs> you're purchasing. Right. So it's almost like pennies on the dollar. Um, but we are planning to take everything that is not nailed down mm -hmm. from here and even a few things that are nailed down. And basically try and, and recreate, try recreate this recreate space everything. as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, we do know that our conference slash kitchenette um, will not be outfit with cabinets. So one of the things that we're hoping to be able to do is to contract with the vocational school and mm -hmm. see if maybe they can mm -hmm. put them in or build them good or do whichever. Mm -hmm. um, some of the plumbing will be done. Some of the plumbing won't be done. It'll only be done to a certain extent. Um, so we've got to figure out how we want to handle that as well. So mm -hmm. that will all be put in. Um, I can tell you that upon Steve's request uh, at the last meeting, um, the our our consultant and I went over an estimate of what would it cost to outfit the new space completely new. Mm -hmm. um, we came up with about $260,000. It's only about $10,000 more than 24 years ago. Um, and that is a lot in fact because the a lot of the stuff that's being put in is going to be put in based on the construction of the school. Like a lot of the soundproofing and everything mm -hmm. is part of the construction. So those are those are parts of the design you don't have to worry about. Yes, yes. Um, now this does not reflect what we beg, borrow, and steal from here and from the black box theater. 
Okay. Um, because the school has checked with the previous donor and they have said, have at it. So a lot of what's in the black box theater, we are pulling out that will have a cost associated with deconstruction um, and then installation in the new area. Now, but when you say- Nearly as much as if we have hmm. a closet. When you say a cost in deconstruction, is WCAT going to be somehow offsetting that cost to the town by taking that year or how is that working? I'm not sure what you're asking. You're saying that, that you're going to take some equipment out of the black box yes. theater. Yes. And that, that equipment was marked as salvage. Okay. It was just going to go away. They were just going to trash it. Um, yes. Was my understanding. Dumpster or whatever. whatever. So basically you're just. Saving it from the trash. Heap. <laughs> okay. Yes. Dumpster diving without the guy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm like All right. Diving with a lot of ladders. Yeah. How much of that in that theater is is going away? Uh, that I cannot answer. Yeah, but you're just dealing with the control room stuff. I am only stuff. dealing with the lighting grid, the lights, and the sound system that are in the theater. Okay. All the right. rest of it, I know nothing about. I don't okay. know about the chairs or any of that. Other I, stuff. I always thought they were going to move the chairs over to the new place, but I may be. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I think, think people's so names are on those chairs. Yeah, attached right. to those chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're taking the little name plates off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my chair. Might, might be easier just to move the whole chair yeah. assembly, you know? That, that, that is way beyond what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so the... Uh, all of the, those chairs right here at this table. All of the AV equipment <laughs> we, are, we have been able to secure. Okay. Um, which will help... In That'll help sense. defray costs of, of the of the move of the studio. Yeah, and this yeah. number can go down based on what we take with us right. from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some things that we are going to have to get new, like our server is going to have to be new because the one we have is getting on to fourteen years right. old, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just waiting for it to pop a drive. Um, Don't our, say things like that uh, now. <laughs> our routers. Um, are getting older. The biggest expense will be the cable companies putting the fiber into the building. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that is coming out because with the recent FCC changes a couple of years ago, which we all talked about, that's an in-kind cost technically. Now they have never actually hit us with it for anything that we've asked before, um, but that is a very large nut so I don't know if that's going to be one of those ones that they will give us for. Okay. And that means that would directly be taken out of the money we get in peg phones. That's one of the things at the national level, that protecting community television thing is all about no in-kind fees get deducted. It's peg fees. The in-kind things don't get deducted from peg fees. But again, that's been refiled twice through February. Mm -hmm. That's a marking bill on the, on the Senate side of the house. So they've seen that they've seen the potential for damage, and in some states they're actually doing um, using in kind fees to reduce their fees. Mm -hmm. so they're trying mm -hmm. to address that issue, and we're estimating that to be about sixty five thousand dollars. Okay, but that's a guesstimate more than anything else. Actually, since we're on this subject, um, one of one of the assignments from the last meeting was uh, to prepare an estimate of the build out in the new high school. Are we going to see that in writing at some point? At some point, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's still that's an open item for the time being. 269, whatever you said. Yeah. To do the whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. That, if we have to do everything. That's plus yeah. or minus 30,000 yeah. because yeah. I don't know where prices will be at the time. Okay. Uh, right. Because one of my routers, I'm actually looking at buying it now because they are eight months backlogged. And if I can mm. get a hold of it now, I'm just going to get it because mm. I don't, its price has been yeah. going up by $600 a year. Right. Now, and and this is this is more a question for Steve than anything right now. But um, none of what we've just been talking about is going to happen for three years. I well, hope it's not three years. <laughs> 20, 2027? No, I think that 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 building will be slated to be ready for uh, the first students, which means this will have to be done. Um, beginning through, I guess three is the beginning of 2027. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. where. I'm but at. I think this would be done earlier, right? 
the last information. Well, that's kind yeah. of what I'm yeah. trying yeah. to find out the here. At least six months early, yes. Because, yeah. because, you know, part of the move, and correct me if I'm wrong, is WCAT for a period of time is going to basically go off the air, correct? Yes, we're hopeful that it will only be two hours, uh, two days. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Two days is my hope. Right. So that's built into the whole schedule plan. Yeah. Okay. That would be my yeah. hope because it'll take us two days to pull everything from here, bring it over there, recalibrate it, and right. get it up and function. Um, the last I heard from the PVC's meetings was that January of 2027 was when the doors are flung open and everybody has four weeks to move. And then the first wrecking ball hits this exact spot four weeks later. <laughs> wow. Right. So that was about all I had right. as far as right. now, yeah. whether that's changed or not, I do not know. There's usually delays. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. But I'm hoping a two week move for us is more than enough and a two day off air at most. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky I get two hours. To try, so. All right. Anything else, Ian? Okay. All right. Approval of minutes for the last meeting on December 13th. Move to accept the minutes. I have a question about the minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get out. No, no, no. Yeah. But nobody, nobody seconded it. So, <laughs> right, so let's see. Uh, go ahead, Paul. I, uh, I had it here for a moment ago. The one word comfortable, I think. That's the word. Yeah, okay. what is that comfortable word? Mike, I, I don't know. That was the number. Steve I, wrote it. I, I guess search for <laughs> Where did yeah, I say there's comfortable? a word comfortable in there that makes good. I didn't completely understand. The context that. was a little bit. You might yeah. have been thinking uh, of a different I'll, word. I'll find it here in a second. Things were going fine. Things are going well. It's <laughs> under high school relocation. High school relocation. Thank or you. New relocation. Comparable. There you go. Comparable. Yeah. Comparable? Yeah. Comfortably comfortable. comfortable. That doesn't say uh, he related the engineering okay. team and oh. the architects have been very comfortable. Oh. I don't know they're comfortable, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but very those engineers are accommodating. 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 Yeah, yeah. Spell check didn't pick that up. <laughs> you spelled it correctly. I spelled it correctly. Yeah. So, so my, it accommodating, word. probably. Yeah. Accommodating. So my question is, how many minutes can we misspell my name? <laughs> All right. Oh, let's get it right. Let's get it right this time. Then when we <laughs> what was it? What, what is it? Be correct. It's spelled like the town. We don't like that. <laughs> Formerly South Reading, right? Right. <laughs> Originally Lynn Village. So I have two um, two corrections: Reading R E A D I N G, and um, comfortable to accommodating. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Time for a motion. Subject subject to the amendments. Amendments. Okay. Second. All of all in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Group member comments. We'll go around the table. We'll go this way since we've had a lot of talk on this corner. Go ahead. Uh, I don't think they have any comments. No comments? No comments in there. We covered a lot of material. We did, I think we've made, made good progress. And I really appreciate your updates on the budget and uh, your efforts to uh, keep it close to even for a you know a transition you it's not easy in the media business i'll tell you brian i have nothing ian uh, no. steve good very good thank you uh no comments but a question uh probably for paul uh on the income statement under um sponsorships and memberships do you have a list that makes up that number who, who the individuals or groups are? Uh, yeah, we do. So it, just to give you sort of the headlines, we have um, members. Uh, you can be a member of WCAT for $50 a year. Mm -hmm. So we have some people who are members in that way. We have some business memberships that are you know, in the $100 to $200 a year category. Yep. We've got um, 
we're trying to in, increase sponsorship by incenting uh, local businesses that, you know, if you're a certain sponsor, you get your logo on the truck, you'll get your, uh, you know, um, reference after the town council meeting, which is our, our profile meeting. Uh, that's about $7,000 or eight, seven to $9,000 from the savings bank. Okay. So um, you know, with the exception of the savings bank value, everything else is like $200 or less. Okay. And, and how do you, how, how do you go about marketing to certain groups or, or, or is it just people approach you? That's an excellent question because we, as, uh, so we formed a strategic planning committee uh, of the board a few years ago and there were three subcommittees. One was, you know, our financial, long-term long financial survival. Mm -hmm. And we realized that we need to be able to get um, corporations like the savings bank to sponsor us. Right. And what can we offer? So we went through a whole series of things, different tiers, you know, you, you're the high tier, you get your logo on the truck, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we have this program. Uh, we have um, five people uh, as employees and we, they're very busy. So we don't have, we have not decided to hire a um, sort of a, a community. Um, basically some stations do have a um, development uh, position where they go out and try to get sponsorships and grants and those kinds of things. Right. So we have never had a formal uh, effort to hire somebody to, to basically have some kind of commission paid for their own job. Um, so that might be something that we want to explore because um, I believe that um, two thoughts. Second was that we don't want to go to the business, small businesses in town who are already dealing with the post COVID economic impact. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to go to, um, you know, up the street to, uh, where we have uh, Jordan's Furniture and the auto dealers and you know, get the surrounding um, big organizations that maybe have marketing dollars and uh, would benefit from having a better presence. Um, so those are some of the things that we've considered and um, the reason why we haven't really launched an official um, campaign to try to raise money in that, in that manner. Right, okay. Because I said, I have upon my own volition started to because before as you were saying it's been very hit or miss it's just been opportunistic we meet up with somebody during the course of doing an event and they'd be like oh yeah that'd be nice to come on down and work out a deal or whatever um i've made a concerted effort um since my starting in this position to go to places like chamber meetings talk to people who may need something um talk to organizations who have a need but don't have a budget for a professional level. Um, so we've had a number of people who are interested in doing something uh, that will benefit their business, but they don't have the money of a professional level where it'd be five, six, seven, eight, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. They can come down here, they put a bunch of sweat equity into it. We give them a little bit of help. We help highlight whatever it is that they're doing uh, for a much smaller amount of money. Uh, so we've started to do that. Yeah. Um, and we've at this point we've had three people who have joined under that aegis, um, who are local business groups, um, and want to create something that would better benefit them in some way or the community. Okay. And once we know that's going to work, we're going to try and roll it out to a bigger audience, but it's baby steps. Because uh, because I did mention it to Steve, the the local youth sports groups. That you know, back when I was involved, you know, 20, 25 years ago, yes, that those groups used to sit on a lot of money, yes. And you know, if you get them as a sponsor, you know, you, you have Pup One, you get Little League, you get WBA, and you know, one of the things that could be offered is you know, put a game a week on public ac access, that, you know. And you know the All Star Game or the championship game because again yeah. again it's issue of staffing. Sure. You know, and yeah. that, the that small dollars we're gonna get. Is that, is that what the, so we're gonna lose money on the staffing side? But if we mm -hmm. said, okay, we'll do the all you know, do, right. do a feature event right. that people would tune into. Yeah. 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 That that really is one of the bigger things is um and also a lot of those groups nowadays are also having their own problems um with funding. I know the, the basketball association has a little bit of that issue with really? the girls' side, not the boys' side, but the girls' side. Hmm. Um, yeah. 
not a lot, but it's just they don't get as many people coming to the girls' games. And then so they have to work harder to get everything that they need. Or at least that's what they tell me. I don't know. Oh, you're talking about the high school. Yes. Oh, the high school. No, okay. High school. I think uh, I think uh, um, but I agree to the other WBA. Ones, but like WBA, where, so where pop one or yeah. So where we yeah. get into that is is if they want us to cover those things, that's great. But I only have so many hours in a week uh in availability of doing things plus a lot of those things are on the weekends, they're on nights. Right. I can't really ask my staff to work all week and then work the weekend. Right. Um, so it really comes down to availability. Uh, one of the things that we had tried for a while was, you know, if you want to do that, that's great. We'll teach you how to do it. You can take the camera and go do it yourself. Sure. And then we'll do the editing. Yep. Nobody wanted to do that. Yeah. Which, is, which is really the fundamental behind public access. Yeah. But not anymore. <sighs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we found a difficulty in breaking that because it's just not enough hours a week. Okay. I have one quick follow up comment on, on your the area you're focusing on, Kevin. Um, we historically have provided free service broadcasting services for some of the local organizations. The best example is the Sweets or Lex for Sherry's. Mm -hmm. And so as a board, we were talking about the fact that you know we we're in a financial situation, we can no longer give our services away. But we can offer them at deeply discounted rates compared to what a similar, you know, for-profit firm would do. So we're trying to figure out um, you know, the best way to introduce the fact that, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to um, charge you going forward uh, deeply discounted rates so we can start to and then approach other you know, nonprofits in the area. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we help you? Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're kind of. Unfortunately, you know, we've done a great service to the community by always offering that for free. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're we're talking about a transition, but that's an important thing. I just want you to make, make aware of. Yeah, it's tough. Okay. And just one quick thing while I'm thinking about it now, along the lines of the sports thing, maybe something to think about would be, you know, if you think of Landrigan or you think of the soccer field down at the Galvin, you know, they've got all the sponsor signs out there. You know, they're just, it's visibility. So, you know, we're covering a fair number of games uh, between the various high school sports and because we can't run ads but we could say you know basketball sponsored by um and maybe it's wba or maybe it's some company that just wants their name up because right. we could get a fair number of views on those um hard to tell for me on anyway in the live stream but on the youtube youtube part of it you know we'll get you know, 500 views of a basketball game. is that right yeah, yeah. so um uh, you know, there might be a, there might be something to say, you know, small dollar, but we'll put your name on the, you know, here's the game, here's, you know, Tim Brown this year as a commentator, sponsored by, and put a name on there for that. So, Again, a way to, to look at it is what, what they do on PBS, you know, um, they can't use the word sponsored, mm -hmm. but they can use the word supported by, you know, or underwritten by, mm -hmm. and um, just do it that way, but... Mm -hmm. The effect is the same. Right. And we have the same bottleneck that we don't have enough man hours in a week to be able to effectively yep. get that done. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there are some opportunities that we, yeah. we need to further explore. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, I do think that the the, the staffing problem for uh, lack of a better word for those things is that feeder system that which has been lacking that we had from the schools. I mean, that was why. I was big fighting to get this in here. Yeah. In this yeah. location when it yeah. came in. And, uh, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I think that could be a great uh, synergy. You know, yeah. kids get experience and get a job and go and get, uh, you know, uh, go on. A lot of kids have gone on to, I think, Framingham State had a great yeah. program. And yeah. That was their, their career. Yeah. Uh, I would uh, mention two things about that. Uh, one, Ryan started and I've continued a very lucrative. Um, relationship with several of the guidance counselors in the high school okay. who have brought us in interns and we have three great ones who do right. your meeting and the school committee's right. meeting i no longer have to have all of my staff there for right. those two nights mm -hmm. it's now down to just having two of them instead of all five of us mm -hmm. which is wonderful unpaid um, intern positions yeah uh, but again it is those are the only three that we've had now for two years right we haven't been able to get any more in. They've been looking, they've been trying to bring them in, but there's still a resistance from the typical way that it was done, yeah. which was through the other program. This is going completely in an office direction. Yeah. Right. right. And as an aside, I used to go to Framingham State. 
Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> they're actually closing. The Are they really? Yeah. Because I knew that a, a friend of my That's son really that you know he, he did documentaries. Yeah. Very successful. Yeah, okay. we had a great started one. Here. Started Amy, here. Amy, anything? Um. No, sorry, I can be there in person. I just got a new knee, so I'm not quite mobile oh. yet. Um, <laughs> but I thought the review of the financials was really was really good, um, and there's a lot of great information that we saw tonight. Okay, Paul. Uh, just one quick follow up on the uh, loan. Our loan interest rate is five point five percent. It is. Uh, we took it out in September of 2022 for um, 72 months. And it's about five hundred dollars uh, a month. Okay, so, so it doesn't make any sense. It sounds like no. We're we're yeah. we, we were fortunate yeah. to get a great good rate. And just a little, a little bit of a disclaimer on that too. Um, we asked for a seven-year term to keep the monthly payment down, thinking that if we had a windfall, we could pay it down yeah. sooner or pay down a chunk. Sure. Um, and they were kind enough to accommodate that. And at the time, the five and a half was prime exactly commercial yeah. loan. Uh, basically break even uh, income statement. So, um, but you're right, if we could do anything to pay that down soon. Right. right. I don't know if that's the market rate or market rate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The mortgages are 8%. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, that's all I had. Okay. Uh, Jim. Okay. All right. So. Any comments from you? None for me. I'm okay. I'm very pleased with the way this meeting has been going. So, you know, absolutely fantastic. And I thank everyone. Uh, let me just take a look at February. How does February 21st sound? You and I have a show that day, so we could break for dinner and then come back for the yep. meeting. What day of the week is that? So Wednesday. 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 It's the third Wednesday. Amy? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. I can do it. Sure. Uh, Works for me. Yeah. All right. February twenty um, first, seven p.m. for for Ian's sake, because he's going to be here all day. Um, does six work for people? I'm trying to do it for you. <laughs> I do. I appreciate that. I, I, I can do six. I can do six. Though. I can do six. Six work yeah, for six me. Six works for me. All right. Six p.m. then. Yeah, the waves in here in the morning. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? A second. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> He's a second. A second. <laughs> he, he jumped the gun. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.